Hey guys, today we have some really exciting content. I have a really good friend and colleague here with me. This is Dr. Joyce, and she's very active on social media. She's a board certified dermatologist, and we are going to talk about sunscreen. But at first, I want Dr. Joyce to share a little bit about what she does and her passions as a dermatologist. Hey everyone, thank you so much, Dr. Jenny, for having me on. My name is Dr. Joyce Park, like Dr. Lou mentioned, and I'm based in Seattle, Washington. I've been doing content creation and education online since 2011, so it's been a while. I'm over at Tea with MD, and I also run a fully virtual teledermatology practice at Skin Refinery. So I'm super excited to be here, and we're gonna talk about all things sunscreen, which we're both obsessed with, so yep. it really works out. And we're both actually in Singapore. <laughs> We've been hanging out this past week. We have been at the World Congress of Dermatology, having a lot of fun, and we finally have some time to sit down and choose some content for you guys. So let's get into it. All right, so the first question is sunscreen sticks and recommendations for use. Let's talk a little bit about sunscreen sticks. What are your thoughts? Do you like yeah. them and how do you use them? Yeah, I feel like sunscreen sticks have gotten really popular mm -hmm. in like the past year, I would say. They weren't as popular or like popping up on social media all yeah. over before that. And I actually did a video just like maybe within the last month reviewing mm. all my favorite sun sticks. I would love to hear what you think, but I think sun sticks are great. They're very convenient, mm -hmm. easy to use, portable, and they're great for reapplication over makeup, but yeah. not as primary. So are you Absolutely. kind of in the same Exactly, world? and then you can bring them in your bag. They're like TSA like safe because it is not liquid, right? right and so right. yeah, I feel like really with like Korean, like K beauty is like where like the sticks blew up, right? Right. It's always been present, but I feel like it was it wasn't until like the introduction like Korean based sunscreen or Japanese sunscreen sticks that they've really become popular. I feel like the formulation of them have mm -hmm. also gotten more elegant. Yeah. They are less likely to leave a white cast, right? Depending on the ones you pick. They're just really easy to apply, go on very smoothly on the skin. One question I get a lot is, how do you reapply sunscreen over makeup? Mm -hmm. So what do you think about sun sticks over yeah, makeup? Yeah, I think of all the ways that you can reapply sunscreen. So reapplying the sunscreens themselves, powder, and then sunscreen sticks. I feel like it's definitely um, less likely to remove makeup. I think you still get definitely get some transfer, right? But I don't wear a lot of makeup in general, and I found that when I do reapply, with the sticks is not as bad. What yeah. about you? Well, you, you never need to wear makeup because oh my God, thank you. Dr. No. Lu's skin is so good, you guys. No, she does not need makeup. No. She does not need filter. You're I need so my sweet. makeup. I actually made a video for YouTube yeah. actually comparing all the different ways to reapply. Uh -huh. And I was wearing a lot of makeup that day. Yeah. Foundation, I had contour, blush, oh and God. then I put stuff over yeah. it. So for me, I think an SPF spray was the uh -huh. least likely to... Yeah. to mess up my makeup. However, I did also use multiple sun sticks over mm -hmm. my makeup. And while it did kind of mess up contour mm -hmm. and my blush, mm -hmm. I felt like my foundation kind of stayed intact. Yeah. So I think sunscreen sticks are not a bad way, but mm -hmm. they're not my favorite way to reapply over makeup. I have actually never used the spray. Can you tell me a little bit more? What's yeah. your experience with that? I think there's a few brands that uh -huh. make sunscreen sprays yeah. and they're they're marketed as makeup setting spray. So there's one that I reviewed by Kate Somerville. I've heard of that one. And that one is nice. However, it's the same issue of not knowing how much you're getting right. on. Yeah. So I like go overboard. I spray yeah. so much yeah. on my face that it's glistening wet. It does dry off. The other thing to be careful of is to right. not inhale the particles. I know. I think that's what a lot of people maybe get concerned about. Yeah. yeah. So I actually like go like this. <gasps> and I take and a deep breath, breath and, and hold my breath, spray the heck out of my face. <laughs> and then I have to actually go to a different area yeah. because the smell is yeah. so strong. But it's one way that doesn't move the totally makeup around makes sense my face, though. So. so sticks we both agree are probably less likely to remove makeup, but yeah. it's it's still not hundred percent like feel like foolproof, right? Yeah. yeah. What are um, your favorites? There's a lot out there. The ones I really like is Isn't Tree. That one, the hyaluronic acid one, is really nice. I find that it's not mattifying, but it doesn't like leave your skin looking shiny. It has like a slight semi dewy finish, I would say. I think my favorite at the moment is another Korean yeah. sunscreen, yeah. actually created by Glow by Ramon. Oh yeah. Like in partnership mm -hmm. with Beauty of Chosun. It's really the matte sun one. stick. And yeah. I like that one because it has silica, I believe, yeah. so that it's oil absorbing. And Great you know, we've been in Singapore. Yeah. It's, we've been in Singapore, <laughs> so everything's just sweating <laughs> off our faces yeah. all day 
along. So that yeah. one's a really great one for this type yep. of humid weather. And then similarly, like Tokobo has the blue one that is really nice. But I don't think, I don't find it as mattifying because I, I did my test myself too because I also have the one from Beauty of Jason. Mm. It's not as mattifying, but it's like less dewy than mm. the Isn't Tree one. And then I do like if for individuals who have like sensitivity to sunscreen, like around the eyes, I think mm. sunscreen sticks can be a good way to get protection without getting like that burning sensation in your eyes. I find that sunscreens tend to run less when you apply with a stick. And so for those with really extra sensitive skin, I recommend like a mineral based. So the ones I've talked about in the past, the MD Solar Science and the Alta MD one, because they actually have a dome shape and I find it fits the contour of the eye really nicely. So I don't like that those for like whole face application, but around the eyes, I think it can be really nice. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I've actually tried the Alta MD one mm -hmm. and the MD Solar one. I reviewed those as well and they left a white cast on my face. So yeah. personally, I'm, I wouldn't use it, but I think that you bring up some really great points yeah. about that. Okay, oh. question number two, what are your recommended lip sunscreens? Now, before we get into product recommendations, let's talk about why is it important to use an SPF on your lips? First of all, sun damage, you can definitely get cancer on the lips and particularly like the lower lip is a very vulnerable area, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And two, just like the rest of our face aging, like it definitely lose a lot of volume and you get dryness and wrinkling on the lips. And you know, that's one reason we inject fillers into the lips, but certainly like the rest of our skin prevention is, is more important. And yet it is an often overlooked area and I'll be the first to admit <laughs> that I do not regularly use lip sunscreen. What about you? I'm also guilty <laughs> of it too. I think I'm really good about when I'm going out for like long walks with my family. Like I've got my whole gear, like I got my sunscreen, sun protective clothing, my hat, it. and then Love it. sunscreen, like the lip, lip sunscreen. But otherwise I don't think I use it on a regular basis. Yeah, I'm also guilty of it too. So are there certain ones that you do like though for yeah. when, you, when you use them? Yeah, I think in part for me is just that I don't really enjoy the taste. And I think that is what I hear from a lot of people too, is like the taste is really hard to get yeah. past. But otherwise Aquaphor has one that is like in a petrolatum base. I think it's like Aquaphor, but with chemical sunscreen. So that's really nice. And then some bum is one I recommend for those who want like flavoring in their like lip protection, because if you are really bothered by the mm. taste, I think I have like a few like banana or coconut flavors. Oh, so that way it's, that. it's not as poor tasting. <laughs> yeah, that chemical yeah, tasting, taste it really makes me really not want to use it. I have used a few that actually have like makeup in them. Oh, so I've really used good. MD Solar Science has like a lipstick with SPF. Ooh, and okay. then Color Science has a lip and cheek tint. Yeah. So you can use it on your cheeks as blush and then put some color on yeah, your Yeah, I've too. used that too and it's really, really nice. I actually really love it for the cheeks. Like, yeah. Like use it like blush. Right. Yeah, I right. have to try on my lips. Next yeah. Time. So a really popular question that pops up all the time is personalized sunscreen recommendations mm -hmm. for each skin type. And it yeah. really is true that you can choose specific ingredients and formulations for different skin types. So I'm going to have Dr. Jenny kick it off for us here <laughs> with recommendations for acne prone skin. Yeah. And like Dr. Joy said, these are just our recommendations. And I think at the end of the day, you still want to try on your skin because it sounds cliche. You probably have heard this, but the best sunscreen is the one that you will like yes that you will want to wear on a daily basis first of all acne acne prone skin i think here it's important to look for sunscreens that are formulated that are like non-comedogenic maybe with ingredients that are anti-inflammatory like niacinamide i really like la roche posay the whole anti-helios line it's really lightweight some of them have like mattifying properties if you're like oily and acne prone and then alta md has like the uv clear as well as tinted also both contain niacinamide and i think that's a great ingredient if you're acne prone and then just make sure at the end of the day to really you know thoroughly cleanse and remove everything as you should especially if you're acne prone like a good double cleanse yeah i love a good yeah. double cleanse and yeah. i love that elta md one i yeah. use it all the time and then dr joyce you have more sensitive skin and prone to rosacea so tell me what are your favorite sunscreens for like perioral dermatitis and rosacea prone skin for perioral dermatitis and rosacea prone skin i think that kind of goes hand in hand with sensitive skin too and tendency to get red and irritated i like mm. to choose sunscreens that are fragrance free really just lightweight on the skin like lightweight mm -hmm. textures not too greasy and then I do like to choose mineral based mm -hmm. sunscreens yeah. for that reason as well and then for rosacea specifically I like a good color corrector <gasps> 
Mm -hmm. So something with a green tint yeah. that can neutralize that redness. Right. So two products that I really like. One is the Vanny Cream Sunscreen. That is a really it's nice It's incredibly cream. gentle. Yeah. Gentle enough even for babies and mm -hmm. children to use. And it's great for sensitive skin. It's free of dyes and all those mm -hmm. other things that can irritate the skin. And then for rosacea specifically, I really like the Dr. Jart Sika Pear Color Correcting Treatment. That has SPF in it. It's a mineral SPF. And then a little bit goes a long way. It really helps because of that green tone to help neutralize any underlying redness. So do you find with the Dr. Jart one, can you just even use that alone if you don't need a lot of cover up to help mask the redness and you don't need it like additional like foundation? I definitely will still do sunscreen as a base layer mm -hmm. first because I'm not using that much of the color correcting oh, that's treatment. that's a really good tip. Yeah, because okay. if you use too much, yeah. it can look a little bit cakey. I can imagine. So okay. I actually spot treat with the color correcting treatment <gasps> That from is Dr. amazing. Okay guys, so here's the takeaway way is like use a sunscreen that you normally would use and then take the green tinted sunscreen and like use that like makeup like color concealer. correcting makeup yeah that correct, is so awesome correct. love it and then you it. can choose depending on how glam you want how much coverage mm -hmm. you want you can do extra foundation on top or you can just go out as is so going along the same line for individuals who don't have necessarily like rosacea but just have sensitive skin what are your some recommendations yeah I have rosacea and I have sensitive skin so it's like a double <laughs> so whammy she's the expert to ask for sensitive skin I tend to recommend mineral based based mm -hmm. sunscreen. So that's Makes zinc sense. oxide or titanium dioxide because certain chemical sunscreen filters can cause some irritation yeah. and sensitivity for people, especially if they're already prone to getting irritation and rashes. My two favorites at the moment, and I have a ton, but these just happen to be two of my favorites at the moment. One is the Isden Arifatona Actinica, which is a mineral based sunscreen. Mm -hmm. It's made in Spain mm -hmm. and it contains these really unique DNA repair zones that yes. helps to reverse DNA damage from the sun. So that's pretty cool. It rubs in really well ultra lightweight because mm -hmm. you know mineral sunscreens get a bad reputation mm -hmm. because they can leave a white cast yeah so i'm really picky in choosing ones that yeah. don't leave a white yeah, cast no, totally and this one it sounds very is very elegant. Yeah. It does not leave a white cast yeah. at all. And then the second one is the Neutrogena Pure Screen. Now this is a newer range. Yeah. I think you like it as well. I do. And it comes in multiple shades, four shades, to yeah. match your different skin tones, mm -hmm. and it does not leave a white cast. Yeah, and I really love that one because it's mineral, fragrance-free, great for sensitive skin, like you said, and the, the variety of shades. Yeah, that's so important. Um, and if you're prone to hyperpigmentation, the tint, or the iron oxide that makes up the tint can really protect your skin from visible light that can cause persistent hyperpigmentation. Yeah, that's definitely key. Okay, the next category is something that we all suffer from in the United States where it's more dry. <laughs> so Dr. Jenny, what are your favorite sunscreen recommendations for dry skin? Yeah, and definitely for me in the winter time, Minneapolis, it's really cold, <laughs> brutally cold. So yes. I look for more nourishing, like thicker creams that can provide hydration, like ingredients like ceramide that are going to basically better support the skin barrier. So one that comes to mind right away is like CeraVe. They're their hydrating mineral SPF. Um, and that one is really nice because it doesn't really leave a white cast, but yeah, it's very hydrating, nice. very nourishing. And then a Korean sunscreen that I really love to use in the winter time. Cause I find that most of Korean sunscreens are really lightweight, good to use all year round, but depending on where you live. And like for me in the winter, it can be like not supportive enough, if that yeah, makes sense. But right. this one, I definitely have used it throughout the winter and it's definitely great. And it's the Thank You Farmer Sun Relief Sun Cream. It's not heavy, it's not sticky, but I definitely find that with the ingredients and the way it's formulated, it's just, it gives a little more extra support mm. to the skin during the winter. That's amazing. I haven't yeah. used that. Must and try. Seattle winters are nothing compared yeah. to Minneapolis winters. So I don't have as much of those environmental triggers yeah. for dry skin, but certainly Seattle does get cold. So I'll have to try that. That one. Yeah, let me know what you think. And then the last category of sunscreens we'll go over today is oily skin. So Dr. Jenny, what are your favorites for yeah. oily skin? So I find oily, you know, acne prone skin are similar. Not that you can't have acne if you have dry skin, but similarly, like the, again, the same line from La Roche-Posay, the Angelios, mm -hmm. but the UV Moon, the new filters oh, yeah. that unfortunately is not quite available in the US, but you can find it in um, online, but it's really popular in Asia 
and European pharmacies. It has a new filter that can basically block long wave UVA to up to 400 nanometers. So that's really cool. But in the US, you can go with Angelios Clear. That one has silica powder, it helps, it has a mattifying property and it's really lightweight. So like I said, the whole Angelios line, I think is just really ideal. If you have like oily, oily combination skin, oily and acne prone skin. And then Cetaphil there, I think it's called Derma Control is a line that's really great for oily prone skin because it has ingredients like zinc that can maybe modify a little bit of the sebum production and also has like the formulation has a mattifying property as well. So that's really nice. I totally um, agree with you. And I love a good multitasking sunscreen like you mentioned. Like we've mentioned a couple today that have uh -huh. niacinamide, which is also uh -huh. good for acne, silica powder, which is good uh -huh. for oil absorption, and then the zinc PCA, which is good for acne and sebum production yeah. as well. So I think just knowing what ingredients to look for can also yeah. just be so helpful. All right, the next question is how to determine UVA protection in sunscreens, particularly in the US. So Dr. Joyce, tell us a little bit about why, what is UVA and why it's important to protect our skin against UVA. Definitely, so just taking a step back to talk about it more generally, the sun can produce multiple types of UV. There's UVA, mm -hmm. UVB, UVC, and UVA is the certain type of UV that's produced at the 320 to 400 mm -hmm. nanometer wavelength, with the long range UV being more like 380 mm -hmm. to 400. And this can definitely penetrate into the skin. This is what's responsible for causing tanning and also certain types of skin cancer like yeah. melanoma. So it definitely is very important to protect against UVA. This person asked a really great question about how do you know how much UVA protection sunscreens provide in the US? Yeah. Because in Asia, particularly developed in Japan, there's a system. There's mm -hmm. the PA plus to PA plus 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 system yeah. that tells you how much UVA protection you get. Yeah. But that doesn't exist necessarily in the US. Yeah. So Dr. Jenny, how do you go ahead and yeah. tell then and how do you determine which sunscreen to get yeah, for UVA I, protection? I wish there was like a more standard way of decoding like the rating and like yeah. how you test across internationally, but unfortunately that's just not the case. So like Dr. Joy said, because we don't have a standard in the US in the sense like that like the system where we have a rating like we do with um UVB. So the SPF that you see on the sunscreen only refers to protection against UVB. However, in the US, for a sunscreen to offer UVB and UVA coverage, it has to undergo testing to fit that criteria, basically to meet the protection against UVA up to 370 nanometers. And if the sunscreen does that, it will be labeled broad spectrum, which I think most sunscreens in the US right. has that. So when right. you are shopping for sunscreens, even though the SPF number is what we mostly look at, also also make sure that the sunscreen sets a broad spectrum protection. It's yeah. been a really long time since I've seen a sunscreen that doesn't say broad yeah. spectrum. So I think maybe like makeup, you know, like literally foundation mm. that has SPF, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think only has like the SPF mm. number because I think legitimately those only have like maybe UVB coverage. Interesting. Well, and yeah. you should not be relying on those exactly because <laughs> exactly. you're not using enough to get yeah. the full SPF benefit. But you're That's so right. Point. Most sunscreens that we wear on a daily basis or when outside our in general broad spectrum. So then it's a question of how do you really interpret the PA rating yeah, that so exists yeah. in Asia, yeah. which hopefully will come over to the US and become more mainstream as yeah. well. So the PA rating is actually a measurement of something called persistent pigment darkening or mm -hmm. PPD. Mm -hmm. And that's a measurement of how your skin tans in mm -hmm. response to UVA exposure. So the different PA ratings like PA plus all the way up to PA plus 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 mm -hmm. measures how much longer it will take for your skin to tan in yeah. response to UVA mm -hmm. when wearing that sunscreen versus without. Mm -hmm. So the PA++++ I believe corresponds to you being able to be out for 16 times as yeah. long with this sunscreen on to get that same degree of tanning as yeah. you were without the sunscreen. Yeah, so like for a pluses is like the highest protection you Max. can have. And I would say of all the Asian sunscreens, majority of them are like four pluses that we see. Right, right? Yeah. yeah, so Strong that's Strong max protection. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's an easier way to think yeah. about it. Yeah. All right, so the last question that we received was why do we have to reapply sunscreen every two hours? Like, 
so random. I know. Why? Right. Yeah, and I know that sounds like a lot, but there are legitimate reasons why we should be reapplying sunscreen. Number one, sunscreen just kind of lose their efficacy over time, especially like chemical filters. They work by absorbing the UV energy. And so also keep in mind like sunscreens, they may rub off, you know, if you're outside, if you're sweating, if you're swimming, it comes off. So that is really the idea of why we should be reapplying sunscreen and not just relying on like a first like one pass in the beginning of the day as your like protection throughout the day. Absolutely. And physical sunscreens also work by mm -hmm. absorbing mm -hmm. UV as well. Yeah. So over time, they can also lose their efficacy. So that's why it's just so important to reapply over time. Yeah. And I know I'm guilty of this, but I'm not the best at reapplying, mm -hmm. which is why I'm always looking for better ways to reapply. <laughs> yeah. But I'm always, it's always in the back of my mind. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about like what we should do and what is like realistic and what most people yeah do do on yeah. a regular basis how often do you reapply sunscreen on a daily basis yeah i think it really mm -hmm. depends on that day so if i know i'm going to be outdoors for the majority of the day mm -hmm. like if i'm going hiking or going to the beach i'll use a really high spf that morning like i'll opt for an spf 75 or yeah. even an spf 50 whatever i happen to have in <clears> my <throat> house that day mm -hmm. to create a really good base and i make sure to put on enough yeah. so you want to put on like two to three finger lengths depending on the mm -hmm. texture and the yeah. runniness of the sunscreen and put on a really nice even layer. And then if I'm going to be literally outdoors under the sun, I do try to reapply every two hours by using either a spray or just straight mm -hmm. up putting sunscreen on my face if I'm yeah. not wearing that much makeup. Absolutely. And also in addition, I make sure the sunscreen hopefully is more like water resistant. That Good way point. there's more protection against like the sweating or say if you're swimming, it's going to stick to your skin better than like a regular sunscreen that's not water resistant. But I would say on like a regular day, if you're working and you're inside, do you reapply every two hours? Because I always get asked that question. I know. Right? Well, okay. Mm -hmm. If you're indoors mm -hmm. and not sitting directly under a big window, yeah. you're probably fine. Like you don't yeah. have to be reapplying every two hours. But for me, like my home office is next to a huge mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. So my the left side of my face is oh. constantly getting sun. <laughs> and yeah. so I do try to reapply or I put That's my totally... window shades down. Yeah. That's yeah, the I other think, option. Yeah, no, I, I I think we have to just balance like what is recommended and like what is practical and what is sure. realistic, right? Yeah. Totally. Like on a day to day, like what if I am working inside in a clinic where there's like not a lot of windows, I don't reapply sunscreen every two hours, but I will make sure to reapply before I walk outside to my car and my drive home. Home. And similarly, if I'm at home and I'm out like by a window and I'm going to be by a window for a majority of the day, I will make sure to like reapply. Maybe not like every two hours, but definitely don't just react, let, rely on like one pass in the morning. I think the reapplication every two hours is going to be more important, even if you're indoors, is for those individuals who are battling like really tricky conditions of hyperpigmentation. So like melasma, for example, I think in those situations, even if you're not outside, it may be helpful just to be a little more aggressive with the sunscreen application especially if you're like by a window and there's visible light coming through and mm. if you hate sunscreen you can choose to cover up in different ways so yeah. wearing a really broad brimmed hat mm -hmm. or wearing a UPF sun shield mm -hmm. that you can use over your face like your Darth Vader <laughs> driving gloves UPF clothing big sunglasses there's other ways yeah. to get around it and absolutely. get good sun protection if you just hate sunscreen yeah so. absolutely all right guys so I hope you found this video informative and helpful especially with the product recommendations and do let us know if you use any of the products that we recommended and thank you so much dr joyce for coming on here and filming this video with me oh my gosh thanks for having me i was telling dr jenny this is so much more fun than doing it by mm -hmm, myself because totally. we get to just have a casual yeah. conversation it's really fun let us know in the comments below what other topics you want us to talk about because we had so much fun that we want to do this more in the future so if you have other questions about sunscreen or want us to make a part two or other skincare hair care topics let us know in the comments below and thank you guys so much for watching bye, bye.